Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Henry Wildberry and uh, on this channel if you've been watching you know we focus most of our attention here on bicycle related topics. Uh, with that said today uh, I have something in mind that uh, we're going to be talking about uh, regarding randoneering riding. Now for the record I'm not actually a randoneer myself at least I don't call myself that but I do ride with other people and today will be no exception. We're going to be meeting up with Therese Cools and we're going to be asking her some questions about randoneering rides. But specifically, we're going to be asking her about sleeping on long brevets. Seeing Therese in some of my other videos, she's kind of my go-to when it comes to randoneering information. And so today I thought it would be a great idea to ask Therese a question that I've been asking myself how do they sleep and where do they sleep and how long do they actually sleep when they're doing really long brevets as they're called so rides that are 400 k's or longer is when you'll temp typically see riders starting to need to sleep at some point during the ride so we're going to talk to Therese we're going to ask her some questions on when she sleeps how she sleeps and uh, how much she actually needs to sleep for these incredibly long distance brevets. So stick around, I think this is gonna be a really interesting topic. Also, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, we just passed 300 subscribers, that is incredible. I really appreciate everyone who has subscribed to the channel and I also really appreciate all the comments that some of you are leaving in the comment section. They are, they're very, very thoughtful and also very um, good questions. So with that, let's uh, head out and go meet up with trees. Bueno, bueno. Bueno, bueno. Bueno, bueno. Bueno, bueno. Bueno, bueno. Bueno, bueno. So I'm here with Therese Cools. So Therese, um, I just told everyone that I was going to be asking randonneurs when they do big long rides like 600k brevets, where do, uh, how do they sleep? Oh, so the cat's out of the bag that randonneurs do actually sleep on long rides. Oh, they yes, don't? Do. I mean, that's... We don't just pedal straight through. Really? Yes. Oh, I thought do. everybody knew that they slept. No. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, I guess uh, you did say anything over 400k is generally when uh, ra when uh, randos start to. Oh yeah, okay. All right, start over. Um, yeah. Reset. See now you know how I feel. I'm constantly restart, <laughs> restart. start, stop, okay. start, stop. Let's take a 600k for example. 600ks are generally set up that is, um, there is a sleeps option spot at the somewhere around the 400k mark and that's usually set up by the club the, the rando club that you're doing the 600k uh, with and um, they can have they might have a campground set up with some tents or they might have a hotel where you can if there's a free bed you could crash on the bed if there's not you're crashing on the floor you would uh, drop off your sleeping bag at the start and since there's volunteers um, staffing the sleep spot, they'll bring your sleeping bag for you. Um, and when you get there, you can roll out your sleeping bag and catch a few Z's before going on. And the amount of time you sleep can really, that just really depends on each um, rider's preference. Some riders just want to get the shortest nap possible to, keep, to get them to um, keep them rolling so they won't um, so they'll be able to finish and some riders will want to ride fast so they can get more sleep and not suffer from as much sleep deprivation what's so your strategy my strategy is to um, personally I don't like to sleep more than maybe two hours because I want to keep going and two hours is just enough to revive me what or, time of the day or night is it when you go to when you sleep? Oh, um, I would say generally around midnight. Okay. Would be. 
good estimation. Do you find it's hard to wake up again and get right back on your bike? Um, su wow, surprisingly not. Because you have it in your mind. Uh, well, I don't personally, I, you know, everyone else. Yeah, people, opinions may vary. Don't, so I don't want to get in terribly late. So um, with that in mind, I can usually get back on my bike and get up the motivation to keep going. I don't so want to get too comfortable and not want to be have, and not want to get back on my bike. So usually like two to three hours two is three enough. Hours. So like if you were gonna do the Paris Brest Paris, which is like 1,200 kilometers, would you sleep one big chunk of time or would you break it up into two different sleep periods or how, how would you do that? I would break it up into a few sleep periods over because it's over three to four days that people will do it in. So a couple hours a night, a couple hours sleep a night. Okay, so you'll stop. Probably the way to approach, but I have to say I have not done a, anything over 600k yet, so I have yet to establish how I would approach that sleep-wise. Is there anything special happening the nights or weeks ahead? Do you do you do more? Do you try to sleep more the night before? You know, to try to get maybe try to bank some extra sleep hours in. I kind of find it hard to go to bed at a regular bedtime or an early bedtime, I guess. So, no, not really. I usually go into it um, just on a normal night's sleep. Pretty well, just normal sleep pattern. Have you ever tried to do a ride that was longer than 400 without sleep? I have not. I'm interested, um, but usually at first, like I'll be riding with one or two people and I'll try to keep their pace. And usually it ends up being people that are catching a little sleep, so I will too. But I am curious about riding one through, and there are there are um, some randoners that do. And you should ask them that question because I bet they have some interesting uh, tips on that. So we're going to run down here and check out this little spot, this little swimming hole. You got this, Trees. I got it. <laughs> you got it. Careful, there is poison oak right here. Oh, thank you for the warning. Don't want that. This is a bit hard to get here, but I promise it once you're here, it's absolutely worth it. Check this out. There's this rock right here you could jump off of if you are so inclined and so brave to do. You've jumped off of this? Yeah, I've jumped off of this. Wow. And there's a, there used to be a rope swing connected right there. Oh my gosh. Across to there. Well, excellent, Therese. Is there anything else you can add that might help some aspiring randonneur on what it's going to take to get out there and do these long rides. Uh, is there anything else you can say about how much sleep it's going to take to to help people get going, to get started? Um, what I would say is that it sounds hard and unapproachable, and you know maybe unapproachable to many, but once you get out there and start pedaling. It, it's amazing how, it's surprisingly easy to keep pedaling. Not easy, but you somehow find the motivation. Maybe it's just because you know that the only way back home is on your bike, so you just, put a, if you throw yourself into it, you just have no choice to, to keep going. So just, so just get out there, give it a try. And, and you'll find that you can actually do it. Most people will find that they can actually do it. Awesome, thanks Therese. I know, I know. <laughs> Man, I'm a 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 man, I